Hello everybody, my name is Carmen and welcome back to Animal Crossing. In this video, we are going to be going over some tips and tricks for Animal Crossing in 2022. Now these are a lot of beginner tips, some you may or may not know, but we're going to do this for maybe the people who are starting out or maybe the people who need a refresh. So maybe you might learn something new today. Before we get started, I would appreciate if you subscribed and liked this video. We're going to be doing a lot of Animal Crossing content, so if you love that, then I would suggest it so you don't miss anything that I post. I'm going to be doing these in sections, so we're going to start off with designing and putting your island together. So my first tip would be to put all of your houses on the beach if you are just starting out or if you want to arrange your island again. This makes it so you don't have any houses in the way of the structures you're building. If you're terraforming, there's not going to be a big house in the way and you have to move it. I would suggest before you do anything else, put all of your houses on the beach. They'll be all organized there and you can move them around later. Once you have all your terraforming done, maybe your decorations, you can just move your house right to the spot you would like. I do this every single time I want to rearrange something or do something again. It's very, very helpful and I wish I knew that when I was starting out to save me a lot of time and a lot of bells. Also, you won't end up with something like this. My next tip when starting an island, this is if you start fresh, would be to pick a good spot for your resident services because let me tell you, you cannot change where it's located. Unless you create a new island, of course, but where you pick your resident services to go, it will stay. So I strongly advise you to be cautious of not having it too close, maybe not having it too far from your airport. I didn't really take this into account, but I'm lucky enough that I didn't have it too, too close to the airport, so I was able to do a nice entrance fortunately but i've seen some beautiful beautiful islands where everything is so perfect but then i hear them complaining about how close their resident services is but thankfully mine i was able to work with it and i hope you're able to work with yours too so be smart about where you want your resident services to be you have options when you begin think it over and choose wisely my third tip for this section of the video is to test where your houses and buildings will go by placing custom designs on the ground what i mean by this is that you can place the dimensions on the ground to get a feel for where you really want your houses or buildings. I do this with every single building I put down. Right now I'm making a square for the dimensions of a house, which is a four by four square. And if I don't like where it is and I really just don't think it's the right spot, guess what I can do instead of moving my house over and over and over again and spending so many bells? I can just erase what's on the ground and retry. And that's a lot simpler than to just trial and error. Where do I want my house? You know what I mean? This is a really, really good tip that I always also wish I knew at the beginning because it just helps the flow of everything when you're planning and designing your island. And as hard as it can be to plan and design your island, why not make things a little bit smoother by going that extra step to plan where you want your houses and buildings to go. I'm going to put a picture up on the screen here of the dimensions of some of the buildings. So if you want to, you can screenshot this. It's also on Pinterest. You can find it online too, but I would suggest screenshotting this so that you can have it for later so you know what the dimensions are of the buildings. My fourth tip for when you want to design and plan your island is no Knowing the limits of the bridges and inclines that you can put. The last thing you want is to have all of your designs planned out, you have your terraforming all set, and you're ready to put your inclines and bridges, and all of a sudden you realize that you went over the limit. And that limit is 10 inclines and 10 bridges. Since the 2.0 update, you went from 8 to 10 for each of them. So keep that in mind, please, when you're doing your layouts for everything. The last thing you want is to have too many and it ruins the whole vibe of everything. So be very cautious of that. And I know. 10 inclines and 10 bridges sounds like a lot and you think well how could I go over that but some people really do incorporate all of those bridges and inclines into their island so beautifully and you may be one of those people someday so keep in mind 10 inclines and 10 bridges is your limit for the island. For the next section of this video I'm going to talk about items and resource tips. These tips are beginner friendly. I'm going to talk about the materials that fall from shaking or chopping trees. As you can see in front of me we have softwood, regular wood, and hardwood. This comes from your regular old cedar and normal trees. To the right of that, we have bamboo that comes from hitting bamboo trees. Bamboo shoots will grow near the bamboo trees, and on either sides, you can see what can potentially fall from your trees. You have sticks, and if you're unlucky, which many of us are when it comes to shaking and chopping our trees, you can get a wasp's nest. That will release a bunch of wasps, and they'll try and catch you. If you're quick enough, you can bring out your net to catch them, and then in turn, you can bring it to Blathers and put it into the museum 
magnesium, but if not and you're unlucky, you'll have to get some medicine. Sometimes when shaking trees, you can also have furniture fall from them. So yeah, I just wanted to give a little rundown of trees and what falls from them and the items that you can acquire and what might cause some trouble. Next, I'll talk about the materials that come from hitting rocks. So there are a couple items that can fall from rocks when you hit them. You can hit them with your shovel. We have stone, clay, iron, and a rare gold ingot. Gold is very valuable in this game and with the bell boom ordinance this is a tip i'm going to talk about in a couple minutes you can earn lots of money you can use these other materials to craft diys you can sell them again this is kind of a beginner tip if you know this awesome if you don't now you know something new and the materials that come from rocks when you hit them and speaking of hitting rocks tip number three for the items and resource section of this video is the technique i'm going to show you on how to hit rocks sometimes if you dig a hole next to it by accident you're not going to get as many resources as you would hope. I'm not sure why this is, but depending on the place that you may mess up and dig, the game won't provide you with as many resources as it would if you didn't. That's why you want to be extra cautious and make sure you don't dig any extra holes in the ground so you can be more efficient and get more materials. I suggest standing in between an object and the rock so that you don't move when you're trying to hit the rocks. That way you're not as likely to make mistakes and hit the ground instead. Now I'm going to talk about eating food and what that will do when you chop your trees and hit your rocks. When you eat something, whether it be a fruit or a vegetable, anything that you can eat, in the top left corner it'll show a 1 out of 10 or a 2 out of 10 depending on how many you eat. This is kind of like your strength and once you hit the rock, it'll break. Now this may be completely intentional, but this can be a mistake for some. If you think this rock is gone forever now, don't worry, it does respawn the next day. But just keep in mind if you have some extra strength with you because if you don't want to hit a rock and you have something to eat, you may accidentally move where you want it to be and that's no fun. Not only can you just hit rocks and have them destroyed, you can dig up full-grown trees from the ground. If you don't want to have to go through the hassle of chopping your tree and planting a new one and waiting, then I very strongly suggest this option instead. The next tip I would like to talk about, number five, for the items and resources section, is seasonal items from nature. Now you can have a lot of seasonal materials drop from trees, such as cherry blossom petals that can be dropped from trees during springtime. Springtime in the northern hemisphere is February 25th, to May 31st, and in the Southern Hemisphere, it's August 25th to November 30th. In the fall, which is September 1st to November 25th in the Northern Hemisphere, and March 1st to May 25th in the Southern Hemisphere, acorns and pine cones can fall off trees, and different kinds of mushrooms can also grow near trees during the last month of fall. And for 10 days during fall, there will be maple leaves that drop too. And an extra item I will mention is during winter, which is November 26th to February 24th in the Northern Hemisphere, and May 26th to August 24th in the Southern Hemisphere is snowflakes. With all the items I just mentioned, you can use them to craft DIYs, you can keep them for yourself if you just want to have them as collectibles, you can do many many things with them. So if you didn't know about seasonal materials that could be crafted into seasonal items, well now you know. The next topic we are going to be talking about is planting and farming. This first tip is very important to people like me who love to plant trees everywhere and to people who want some variety with their trees around their island. I personally think an island looks best when there are trees of different shapes and sizes and today I'm going to teach you how to stunt the growth of a tree. First you'll have to plant your tree obviously and you'll have to wait a couple days until the desired height of your tree is at the place you want it to be. After you have your tree and the size that you want you can go and dig a hole directly behind it and plant a fruit of any type. This will cause a tree sapling to sprout up and it will stunt the growth of your tree because the trees in Animal Crossing need a space around it to grow and by planting something behind it it's not going to be able to grow anymore. So then you have your different sizes of trees. This is really good for decorating and it really helps to make things just look better. Tip number two I'm going to talk about for the planting and farming section is flowers. How they grow, how to get different colors, maybe talk about a bit of hybrid crossing. If you plant the same type of flower together depending on the colors they will create maybe a new color, maybe a duplicate, and whatever the result of those two flowers is, that is your hybrid flower. Now, to get very rare flowers, there are very specific ways of breeding your flowers. Sometimes you can't cross a normal flower with a normal flower. You'll have to cross a normal with a hybrid, a hybrid with a normal to get your desired color. And in most cases, this is to try and get a rare type of flower, such as a blue rose. I'm gonna put up on the screen now different crosses between flowers and the colors that they can potentially make. Make sure to water your flowers every day to get your results, because if you don't water your flowers, there's not as much potential 
beneficial for them to grow the way you want them to. My next tip for this section is crops and where to get them. You can get new crops from Leaf's plant stall. Leaf is a character in this game that comes by your island every so often to sell you things such as flowers, crops, shrubs, and more. He will have two different crop options in his shop each time he comes to the island. If you really want to acquire all the crops, pay attention to when Leaf is on the island because it's a slow process, but you will slowly start to gather all of your crops, and in turn, you'll be able to grow more crops and have a nice supply. Another way you can get crops, which is a bit more out there, is if you have friends on Animal Crossing, they can come and plant crops on your island if you give them the proper permission. You can do trades with people. There's always options on Nookazon. If treasure islands are a thing that you want to take action on, then I suggest treasure islands. There are many, many ways to acquire any item really, but it's just the way you want to do it. So if you're not comfortable with treasure islands or having people over, then in this case for crops, Leaf is the way to go and he will visit every so often. I'm pretty sure it's once a week he will visit. I will also leave a picture up on the screen now of the different types of crops you can get if you are interested in any of them. Since we are on the topic of Leaf and when he comes to your island, if you have a big collection of weeds like we all do and you want to get rid of them, selling them to Leaf is an option. Now you may be thinking, well I could just sell them at Nook's Cranny, I can sell them at a price there. Well the reason this is a tip on my list is because you can sell these weeds for double the price at 20 bells per weed. Now if you have a big collection, you're seeing dollar signs. My final tip for planting and farming is money trees. Now you may be walking around your island and see this little glowing speck coming up from the ground and wondering what it is. Well, if you take your shovel and you dig it up, you will dig up some bells. Now, before you close off that hole and walk away, if you take some more bells from your inventory and bury them in the ground, as time passes, a money tree will show up where you will get triple the amount of what you planted. Geez, you can even have a whole money tree farm if you'd like, but this is just a tip for anybody who didn't know what that little glowing speck was in the ground and how you can capitalize on making some more bells. Speaking of earning more bells, our next topic is making money and how you can do it in this game. And my first tip is the bell boom ordinance. If you go to resident services and talk to Isabel, you will have the options to implement different ordinances on your island. If you go through with the bell boom ordinance, items will sell at a higher price, but in turn, anything you want to sell can be bought for a higher price. In this example, I'm going to use gold and show you how much you can make from this ordinance. Now, I know people may not have a couple stacks of gold, but if you collect different items that have value, you can really gain a lot from this ordinance. So I really suggest talking to Isabel and figuring that out for your own island and your own gain. Another basic one is fish and bugs. You can go to the next cranny and sell any duplicates or if you just wanna sell the ones you catch, you can sell those to Timmy and Tommy at a nice price depending on what type of fish or bug it is. Obviously, the more rarer, the more bells you're going to make from it. Here I'm going to leave up a list of the values of different bugs and fish. Again, if you'd like to screenshot, it's good to keep for later. You can also search this up anytime you'd like. Catching fish and bugs is just a really good way to make a few extra bells. Now this next tip, Tip number three for making money may not be very good for everybody. It really depends on how you want to play. I mentioned it earlier, but treasure islands are islands that you go to that have many, many items that are run by people who have these mods that can supply these items. I get it, it's not for everybody. Some people may feel that it might be cheating. Others think that they can gain from this by getting all the items they want to make their island look really nice. So for those people who are actually for treasure islands, I suggest keep listening. I got the gold that you just saw from a treasure island. Gathering these materials really can help by making bells on your own island too, where you don't have access to all those supplies. On treasure islands also, you can do this thing called infinite bells. This is where I personally draw the line. I don't like doing it, but if you really, really wanted bells, you can go to a treasure island and sell turnips for a lot of money where you can max out your bells in your account. And the next way I suggest it for making bells would be turnips and not just selling your turnips, but finding where to get and to sell. And what I mean by this is paying attention to your prices and prices of people on other islands. Reddit is a very good place to find out who has what prices. Sometimes on other people's islands, at Nook's Cranny, they can sell for 600 per turnip, and that is a lot. And if you feel comfortable enough to go to somebody else's island, you can take your turnips with you, sell them for that price, and take your earnings home. In turn, you can also keep track of what your prices are on your island 
mind. And if you have a desirable price, you can post this anywhere you think it will get attention and people will request to come to your island. One time my turnips were at 565 and I made millions of bells from just tips alone. Because when people sell their turnips, they leave a tip before they go for your kindness of letting them come to your island. And that's also a tip I recommend. Always tip people if you go to their islands and they're providing you with something that benefits you. Be nice, be kind. But yeah, keep track of your turnip prices. You can make a lot of tips off of that. Millions, if people so choose. And the last section I'm going to talk about is buying and selling turnips. How turnips work, the do's and don'ts, you get the gist. Every Sunday between the hours of 5 a.m. and 12 p.m., Daisy Mae visits your island and will provide you with turnips at a certain price. These prices can be lower than others, but they usually don't run too, too high. You can buy turnips from Daisy Mae, and from there, it's what you choose to do with them. You can eat them if you'd like, but for the most part, turnips are used to actually make bells. Now, Nook's Cranny will not allow you to sell turnips on Sundays. That is their policy. We will not let you sell turnips on Sundays, but from Monday through Saturday, you can sell your turnips. The turnip prices at the shop will change, so there are two new prices every single day. This change happens at 12 p.m., so if there's a price you don't like or do like, make sure to jump on that before they change. And my final tip for this section and also this video is how your turnips will rot if you leave them past the next Sunday. You will not be able to sell them for very much. You can't eat them. It's really just a waste. So make sure you sell your turnips before next Sunday. Your turnips will also rot and go bad if you time travel a certain amount of time. I did this once. I was time traveling and I had all my supply of turnips. They filled up my beaches and I time traveled and by mistake. I didn't know this and I wish I did, but now you know. So if you're a person who does time travel in Animal Crossing and you also invest your money in turnips, they do not mix. So be cautious of that fact. And with that last tip and trick stated, that concludes our 20 tips and tricks for 2022. A lot of these have been around for a long time, maybe common knowledge, but if you found something new in this video, please let me know in the comments below. I would love, love, love to hear your input. I love interacting with you all and seeing your opinions. If you had any opinion on this video today, make sure to share your thoughts with me. And with that said, thank you to anybody and everybody who watched this Animal Crossing video. I really, really appreciate it. And I would also appreciate if you subscribed and liked this video. It really helps me to push my content out to more people, it helps our channel grow, and it inspires me to make more of this content. So again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another Animal Crossing video. Bye!